Now, after attempts at the highest level by President Tinubu himself to negotiate a truce between the current governor, Sim Fubara, and the former governor, now minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyesa Mwike, the prolonged bitter quarrel between the two former political allies is far from over. And now to add to the chaos, there's a new threat from members of the State House of Assembly in River State who are loyal to Mr. Wike to impeach Governor Fubara. The lawmakers, of course, defected from the PDP to the APC, which technically, in the strictest interpretation of the law, means that they can no longer retain their seats, an interpretation which they reject. And so the issue has moved to the courts for a judicial pronouncement, whilst there have also been appeals to the police to step in and enforce the law against people said to be in violation of the Constitution. With more on this, I'm joined now on the line from Port Harcourt by the influential River State cultural, political and environmental commentator and human rights activist Anne Keo Briggs, who is also the convener of the Niger Delta self-determination movement. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us uh, from Port Harcourt. So j just briefly for those in our audience um, who are just becoming aware of this latest escalation in the political crisis in River State. Can you, as briefly as you can, summarize for us what the sticking points are? Because essentially this is a continuation of the battle for supremacy between Governor Sim Fubara and the former governor, now FCT Minister Nyesa Mwike. Um, yes, good evening. Uh, quite honestly, if you remember, um, I was on your show a couple of months ago and um, I think I did say at that time that the situation in River State is far from over. Um, we are very much aware that there, there are eight points in the document that um, the President gave to the Governor of River State uh, to sign and the Governor of River State signed this uh, document. Um, in his words, for the sake of peace. Now, if anybody, in our opinion, is breaching any of those eight points, bearing in mind that um, the, the governor has more or less carried out all, if not um, out of eight, may have just left out one. That one is uh, to go and represent um, the, uh, the budget to the uh, the house members who left um, the pdp party and went to apc and by law they are no longer representing anybody in uh, in river state now uh, i need to very quickly look at this um, one of the points is that uh, the the courts um, instituted in the courts by the governor uh, should be withdrawn he did all impeachment proceedings initiated against the governor um, should be dropped immediately. Well, we're all very much aware that that is far, uh, that is very far from the uh, from the truth. So, the fact that we're back again uh, discussing the impeachment, the call for the impeachment of the of the governor by Tony Okocha, whose uh, leadership of the APC in River State is um, is in court and also who is um, claiming to be the chairman of APC in River State is also uh, the, the NDDC representative of River State people. Now, there is um, something really funny going on in the politics of River State where there is just no law and order anymore. Um, it is about the people who are supporting a minister of the Federal Republic and the people who are supporting um, a, a, against uh, the, uh, the governor of, um, of River State. The governor is a duly elected uh, governor of River State while the minister is uh, an appointee of the, of the president. So they are, um, what they are supposed to do for River State are two different things as far as we're concerned. The crisis that is looming in River State it's very dangerous 
And that's why we are still talking and cautioning that this must stop. Well, I mean, thanks for setting that out uh, for us. I have to say, just listening to you there, that it sounds, I mean, incredibly perverse that we've got this acting chairman of the APC, Tony Okocha, who is acting, not substantive cha state chairman, calling on lawmakers whose legitimacy is under question as lawmakers and who may well not be fully accepted members of the APC to go and impeach a sitting governor. But let me ask you this, um, Ms. Briggs. Um, President Tinubu, of course, intervened in the previous conflict, or, well, the, the outset of the conflict, and tried to resolve things politically rather than constitutionally with hindsight was that the wrong approach because i mean it, it seems as if it's now come back to bite everyone well oh, not everyone uh, just um, them that uh, participated in um, in that uh, acceptance because they it's very clear and it was very clear to people like me and the elders forum and we have said it all along and we will continue to say it, that the president, though the president of Nigeria, was elected along with the governor of River State. He, the president was elected, elected on the platform of the APC, and the governor of River State was elected by the people of River State and people of, that are not River State people that live and walk, live and work in the state. And so, in terms of being elected, there is no difference between the president and the governor. And the governor is representing the people of River State. Now, the fact that the, uh, the, uh, the president uh, took that step and asked the governor to sign this document along with his deputy, as we said then and we continue to say, is unconstitutional. There is no law that allows the president to declare uh, eight points or 10 points or one point resolution to a crisis in River State that will spill out of River State, go into the Niger Delta and spill into the, uh, the federal uh, capital territory and the federal government. Why do I say so? Because all the monies that is needed by Nigeria is coming from the Niger Delta region. A high chunk of it is coming from River State. Um, therefore, it is very important that not just um, the president, that all peoples, uh, particularly journalists, are very clear on this issue and not mislead the people of uh, River State and not mislead the people of Nigeria who don't understand the, uh, the pattern of politics in River State 1 and don't understand the, uh, the dangers, if you like, of continuing to allow this to fester. The FCT minister is no longer the governor of River State and therefore he cannot uh, hold sway, he cannot continue to have people who claim to be his supporters that are opposed to the progress and the governance of River State. If they want to do that, they should go and support him in Abuja. He needs all the help he can get. But to stay in River State and throw the state into this turmoil it, that is going to consume um, the, uh, the Niger Delta by um, the uh, uh, security and otherwise, and the economy of Nigeria is dangerous and it has to stop. And that's what we keep warning over and over again. Like Saregbe said this morning, what elders can see um, sitting down, that uh, people like uh, people who claim to be supporters of Nyesom Wiki cannot see standing up. There is danger in River State and it has to stop. Let it not be said tomorrow that people did not speak up. We have political elders and leaders in River State. We, the owners of River State, are cautioning 
that what is going on in River State in the name of politics is not acceptable, it will remain unacceptable to the owners of River State. Well, so basically, in a nutshell, um, uh, if I can deduce from what you're saying there, this is once again about the interest of Nyesom Wike being imposed on the governor and the people of River State. And any attempt to resist it incurs the wrath of Mr. Wike, who has amassed a lot of power uh, and who hits back with all the political muscle that he can muster. Now, I understand um, that some members of your forum um, have appealed to the Inspector General of Police to step into the fray and essentially enforce the provisions of the Constitution by throwing out these people who purport to be lawmakers, even though their seats would have been declared automatically vacant as a result of their defection. Do you see the IG of Police doing that? Um, I wish he would. And under the right circumstances and normal circumstances, that is what should be done because they are breaking the law. But then we've all come to accept, or some of us, some have come to accept, I'm not one of those pe people, that lawlessness is something that has come to stay in Nigeria, whether it is political lawlessness or um, lawlessness of um, looting the resources of Nigeria and people doing whatsoever they want in the name of politics and power. If not, um, if we have a situation where clearly a group of people who really, the, the president referred to them as his children. And so I, the president should call his children to order because if he is not aware, the, the president should be aware because he was once a governor, that these people having left their, their position as lawmakers representing uh, the sections of um, uh, River State in the, in the, in the House of um, Assembly in River State have given up their claim to, uh, to, uh, to the title of lawmakers. And if they are not lawmakers, then it is true that they are uh, imposters and purportedly passing themselves along as uh, lawmakers. They are no longer lawmakers in River State. What they are are troublemakers. And I think that the, uh, the, the Inspector General of Police, um, the National Security Advisor, and the President, I keep calling the President, because the President involved himself some say as father of the nation. We didn't call on him as the father of the nation. We called on him as the president one and as somebody who appointed um, the federal capital territory minister to serve in his cabinet. Now, having done that, he must see the crisis and he must be aware of the problem that in River State, in the Niger Delta and in Nigeria. And I don't think on top of everything that the, the president has had to deal with that he needs this extra uh, push on his, um, on his government to, uh, uh, to ignore what is brewing. It is um, successive governments ignoring certain things from uh, the issue of uh, Boko Haram to the issue of uh, headers, to the issue of um, unknown gunmen and known gunmen that has brought Nigeria to where we are today. So the, the government of uh, the federal government have to sit down and uh, appraise what is going on in River State and let the law take its course. We're not asking for anything else in, um, in, right. in Nigeria. Well, what we're asking for is law. Yeah, but when you talk about the law, I mean, you, 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 you were speaking there about the, the president, the, the fact that there was problematic him intervening politically rather than constitutionally and allowing sort of the law to take its course. I mean, um, I, I'm wondering whether you think that in those circumstances it would 
not be right or, or it would be right for the inspector general of police to await a judicial pronouncement on the matter before taking action because i mean it is yet to be judicially decided um, if the defection of these lawmakers was as a result of a national crisis in their party, the PDP, in which case their defection would have been legally legitimate. Well, yes, because, see, um, the Inspector General of Police is not just there to, um, if you like, just to oversee things after they have happened. He is there to be able to calculate and know what is going to be a problem for his principle and what is not. And what is going on in River State politically is one of those things that could erupt overnight. Look, I had uh, Tony Okotia talking about disrespect. I don't understand what he means by the, the governor of River State is disrespecting the president of um, Nigeria. We're not talking about the issue of respect or not. If we are, we would be shouting about the disrespect that the governor of River State has had to put up with. And in translation then, the disrespect that the people of River State have had to put up with, where the governor is called all sorts of names. And he's been quiet when the governor was quiet. The, it was said that he was clueless. And this was the mistake that was made about good luck Jonathan. When Jonathan was quiet, he was called all sorts of names. And when he began to speak, he was still called all sorts of names. So politics in Nigeria, if you are not on top and telling people what to do, then you are there to be the bull in the, in the China shop, which is what is happening in River State. Some group of persons in River State are refusing to accept that there is a new sheriff in town. The governor of River State is the governor of River State and nobody else. And trying to personal opinions or groups of personal opinions on the government and people of River State is going to bring problems. And the, uh, the, the, the need, again, to call on the Inspector General of Police, the need, again, to call on the National Security Advisor is for them to use their positions to avert the disaster of insecurity that will emerge if this continues. Right. Okay, well, uh, we've got just about a minute left, and, and thank you for the time you've taken to explain things to us and uh, analyze the situation. What do you think is going to happen next? If the lawmakers or purported lawmakers proceed with impeachment, is that likely to complicate an already messy situation and perhaps create a new front in this crisis which would now raise questions possibly legal questions about the legitimacy of the governor? Well, uh, sadly, the, um, the judiciary has not done its, uh, its job very well when it comes to politics in Nigeria, which is really a shame. Not all judiciary, some members of the judiciary are not doing what they should be doing. Now, the, the truth of the matter is that what is going on in River State? If we remember when this thing started last year with Sim, the reaction of the people of River State, from men to women to, uh, to old people, has been very clear and remains very clear that the people of River State will not accept what is being imposed on them. Now, if the governor decides to go along with what is being done, then that is his choice. And it is also our choice to reject it. But if the governor of River State stands for the people of River State, with the people of River State, and for law and order, the people of River State will stand with the governor, will stand for law and order, and will not accept this imposition of to be the governor of people who are not appointed 
uh, to work with the governor to continue to throw spoke to uh, to throw obstacles in the future of River State. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, on that note, um, Anne Keo Briggs uh, is a very influential River State cultural, political and environmental commentator. She's a human rights activist and she's also the convener of the Niger Delta self-determination movement. She was talking to me there from Port Harcourt. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Port Harcourt. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.